Hello and welcome to this lecture on advanced electric drives. In the last lecture, we are discussing about the trapezoidally excited uh, permanent magnet brushless DC motor drive. In trapezoidally excited motor, the back EMF is a trapezoidal waveform. Let us see an example of a trapezoidal motor. So, this is the view of a trapezoidal motor and here we have three phase distributed windings and the windings are phase A, phase B and phase C. The windings phase A, phase B and phase C are positioned in the space 120 degree apart. Phase B is shifted from phase A by 120 and phase C is shifted from phase B by 120 and these are distributed windings. It means the windings are placed in the slots. So, we have the slots and each winding if we see the phase A, the phase A is spread over 60 degree here and this is A prime the return path of phase A. So, if A conductor carries dot current, dot current means it is coming out of the plane and A prime will carry the cross current something like this. We have we have a winding, we have a torn of a winding and these two sides of the torn are placed 180 degree apart. So, if it is one torn of winding A, now this will be lying under A and this will be lying under A prime. So, if A is carrying a current like this which is upward coming out of the plane, A prime will be carrying current which is downward. So, we can say this is the dot current and this one is the cross current that is what is shown in A and A prime. Similarly, we have B and B prime this is B and then we have B prime and B and B prime are the two sides of the windings one side is A other side is B prime they are shifted by one pole pitch that is 180 degree electrical angle and if one of them is carrying dot current the other one would carry the return current that is the cross current. Similarly, we have phase C, phase C is shifted from phase B by again by 120 and phase C has got C and C prime, C is for the one side of the turn and C prime is for the other side. So, this is how the windings are distributed, they are not concentric, they are in fact distributed in space. The distributed harmonics uh, distributed windings have one advantage that the space harmonics are reduced. When we distribute the windings in the space, the harmonic, the space harmonics of the MMF are very much reduced because they can be approximated to a trapezoidal waveform and the harmonics are less compared to a concentric winding. Now, here the windings are distributed. So, uh, if we see that phase A and A prime each one is occupying 60 degree. So, here this is also 60 degree here mechanical as well as electrical because here we have assumed that the number of poles in this case is equal to 2. It is a two pole structure we have one north pole and one south pole where is the north pole here we have a north pole of the rotor, the rotor is a permanent magnet and has got two poles, one is a north pole, other is a south pole and the south pole is here. And this magnet, this permanent magnet at place in the rotor, it looks like it is a surface mount permanent magnet rotor. The permanent magnet is housed in the surface, so this is the, the permanent magnet for the north pole and similarly, 
this is a permanent magnet for the south pole. So, uh, these magnets are placed in such a way that this side is north and this side is south and the flux coming out of this uh, permanent magnet are almost constant. So, in fact, if we plot the flux lines, the flux lines will be almost like a square wave. So, if we plot the flux lines of this magnet against theta r, here we have theta r in the x axis and flux density or b is in the y axis. So, we will see that flux density here is nearly constant. This for the north pole and for the south pole something like this. So, this is 180 degree and this one is 360 degree. So, these are the this is the flux density waveform of this kind of motor where the rotor is a permanent magnet having two pole structure. Now, if we see here in the stator phase A, the phase A is spread over 60 degree here. So, when the permanent magnet is north pole is entering the stator phase A, gradually the south pole is going away, north pole is entering. So, there is a gradual rise of the induced TMF, because induced TMF we, knew, we know by definition is B L V, flux density L, the length of the conductor in the linear velocity. So, when it is changing from north pole to south pole, gradually it takes some time to become fully south pole or from north pole to south pole this will take some time and this overlap time is 60 degree. It means, for 60 degree interval a phase will have both north pole and south pole. So, during that time the induced TMF will be gradually rising after the end of 60 degree the induced TMF will be constant. So, here if we plot the induced TMF of a phase let us say that this is phase A. E A and we are plotting this induced TMF in this case against theta r. So, this induced TMF will be a function of speed. So, this will be gradually rising in this case and at the end of 60 degree interval it will be from fully north pole to fully south pole. Now, the present situation is the induced TMF in phase A, the phase A, A in this case is seeing full south pole, A prime is seeing full north pole. So, the south pole has fully entered under phase A. So, it means the induced TMF is maximum there and this induced TMF is going to stay there for how much duration? This will be staying for another 120 degree. So, in that case what we will see here that up to this time it will stay for 120 degree here So, this is 60 degree and this is 120 and this is 180 degree. And after the end of a span of 120, the flux will again, the winding will again see the north pole. So, the south pole will be going away and the north pole will be entering and again that will be duration of 60 degree. So, here it will again come back here. 
and this is again 60 degree interval. So, this is 240 here 180 plus 60 is 240 and this is going to stay for again another 120 and 240 plus 120 is 360 degree and 360 is a complete of one cycle. So, we see that the induced EMF have, has completed one cycle at the end of it the same thing will repeat the induced EMF will again rise and will be maximum here and the same period will repeat. So, this is basically one cycle of induced EMF. It rises from negative maximum to positive maximum for 60 degree interval. It stays at the maximum value for a duration of 120 degree. Again it reverses from positive maximum to negative maximum within a duration of 60 degree. It stays at the negative maximum here again for 120 degree. And this is the nature of the induced EMF in a single phase that is in phase A. So, if it is an induced EMF in phase A, phase A, phase B, phase C are symmetrical. So, whatever is happening to phase A, the same thing will be happening to phase B and phase C respectively, but after a delay of 120 degree. It means phase B induced EMF will be shifted from phase A by 120. So, we can we can plot the complete induced EMF in the following fashion. So, we have a structure like this. So, we are plotting the induced EMF of each individual phases phase A, phase B and phase C. these are the 60 degree intervals so we will start with phase a for phase a the induced emf will be maximum here let's say we are talking about phase a and then it will take about 60 degree for reversing it voltage amplitude, then this will be stay with the negative maximum again it will reverse the voltage to the positive value and then it will stay here. So, this is for phase A induced EMF in phase A and this is the origin and what we are plotting we are plotting against theta r and theta r is nothing but omega r into t omega r is a rotor electrical speed theta r is the rotor electrical angle. So, we are plotting the induced EMF against the rotor electrical angle for a two pole structure the electrical angle is same as the mechanical angle. So, theta r is the same mechanical angle of the rotor. So, in that case this is the induced EMF seen in phase A and for phase B the phase B is shifted from phase A by 120. So, this is 60 degree interval. So, we can say 60 120 and this is 180 and this is 240. 300 and this is 360 completion of one cycle. So, phase B will have this positive voltage after 120 degree of phase A and this will display the same waveform like this, this is for phase B. So, this is E B here the induced EMF of phase B of the trapezoidal excited motor 
And what about phase C? Phase C will be shifted from phase B by again 120. So, uh, phase C will have the maximum positive voltage here and then this will have the negative voltage here for 120 degree and again the maximum positive voltage here. So, this is the waveform for phase C. So, we are plotting everything against theta r the rotor angle. So, uh, and what we do here how to control this kind of motor? We are having a trapezoidal excited permanent magnet motor and we would like to control it. We would like to control it like a brushless DC motor. Now, here what we do see in the waveform the back EMFs or the induced EMF of phase A, phase B and phase C are not sinusoidal are in fact trapezoidal here. We excite the respective phases by quasi rectangular current waveform. So, uh, the current of phase A looks like this, this is for phase A, we will say I A, similarly we will have I B and similarly we have I C. So, let us say we can start with I A. And I A will be a quasi rectangular wave. If we extend this, we will be able to draw the current of phase A. So, this is what we want that phase A current should be quasi rectangular, it should be something like this, it should have a value I D for some time then 0, this minus i d, then 0, then again plus i d. Because, what we want in this case is that E A and I A should be in phase. It means, whenever the back EMF in this case is, in fact, what we are doing here, we are having this current block like this. When the induced EMF is positive, the current is positive. When the induced EMF is negative, the current is also becoming negative. And as a result, the product of induced EMF and the current is always positive and hence we have a positive power and thus we have a positive torque. Similarly, for phase B, we can draw the current for phase B and phase C respectively. So, these are the 60 degree intervals that we have. And for phase B, we can have this I B I B will have this nature positive here then 0 here and then negative here. Similarly, here we have 0 and we have negative. So, that in this case the current pulse essentially exists here, this is I B. When the back EMF is positive, we have the current positive, when the back EMF is negative, the current is becoming negative. Similarly, here also we have the negative current as a result in phase B also E A, E B and I B are in phase and the product of E B and I B will be positive and hence we have a positive power. Similarly, for phase C we can have the current in the following fashion. This is the current again a quasi rectangular current here. And here also we have 0 current, negative current. 
and this is I C and we have the origin here and these are all against theta r the rotor angle. So, as the rotor rotates the back EMF are trapezoidal in nature and the current which has to be injected into the various phases will be of quasi rectangular in nature. How do we inject the currents? The currents are injected using a voltage source inverter. It is a three phase voltage source inverter which is used to inject the current into the three phases of the motor. So, we will see how the currents are injected by using a voltage source inverter. So, we have a voltage source inverter, a three phase voltage source inverter having the transistor switches These are the diodes, the anti parallel diodes or the feedback diodes for feeding back inductive energy back to the source. Here we have the voltage here V d and this is the input current that is I d. This for phase A. Similarly, for phase B, we have another leg for phase B, this for phase B of the inverter, feeding the phase B of the motor and then we have the C phase. So, these are the various transistors we have. Now, we can call this to be transistor T 1 and the correspondingly the diode the feedback diode is D 1 and this is T 4 and the corresponding diode is D 4. This is T 3 and the diode is D 3 and the transistor here is T 6 and the diode here is D 6. Here the transistor is T 5, the diode is D 5, the transistor is T 2 and the diode is D 2. So, we have 6 switches here, 6 transistor switches and uh, 6 diodes and the diodes are required to feed back the inductive power back to the source. And we have the 3 phases of the motor, the motor 3 phases are like this, we have phase A here, phase B, this is phase C may be star connected. So, this is a, this is B and this is C and these are connected to the respective outputs of the inverter and the current which is injected in, into the phase A is coming from phase A of this. So, this current is flowing here, this is called I A as the phase A current that we have plotted in this case and similarly, the current which is coming to phase B is actually coming from the inverter, this is also I B, this is I B, for phase A it is I A, same current as this. Similarly, for phase C, phase C here is connected to this phase of the inverter and this current is 
I C same as this current here is I C. This as per the convention. Now, let us say for the first 60 degree interval. So, when theta r in this case is greater than 0 and less than 60 degree, we are in the first sector, the first 60 degree. In the first 60 degree, the current I A is positive and current I B is negative and the amplitude of this current are all I D. I D is the dieseling current which is assumed to be approximately constant. So, in this case what we have here is this that this current amplitude is I D. I D is constant, this also I D is the dieseling current, this is I D and this is also I D. So, this currents I D is basically coming from the DC link that is this current and here for the first 60 degree we can see that I A is positive, I A is plus I D and what about I B? I B is minus I D. So, in the first 60 degree we see that I A is positive, but I B is negative. It means for the first 60 degree the transistor T 1 is conducting. So, the current is flowing like this to I A to this particular phase and it is returning through phase B like this and going to phase B and through the transistor T 6. So, for this particular region 0 to 60 degree we can say that T 1 and T 6 are operated. So, that I A is positive and I B is negative. Now, the objective is that the current has to be confined to a band. So, so that the current becomes a rectangular nature. It is basically a quasi rectangular current waveform, but we cannot keep the dissolving current absolutely constant. So, we have to control the current. How to control the current? The current can be controlled using hysteresis current control method. So, uh, we can see how the how the current is controlled in the following way. We can control the current like this. This is the reference current we can say it is I D star and the actual current will be controlled within a within two bands here. Actual current will vary like this going up and going down, going up and again going down. So, this actual current is essentially the current I A. So, we are controlling current I A, we are controlling current I A by controlling the switches and the switches are T 1 and T 6. If you see the equivalent circuit, in the equivalent circuit we will see that we have two switches here, one switch is here and other switch is here and we have a DC source which is present here that is V D. We have T 1 and we have T 6 and this is connected to phase A and we have phase B which is connected to this particular transistor. So, in this case when we turn on T 1 and T 6 the current flows in the following fashion. The current flows like this, it goes to phase A and returns back through phase B 
like this back to the source here. So, this is the direction the path of the current in phase B and phase C. So, we can say here that I A is positive, I A is plus I D, this is our I D and I B as per the convention is negative, it is flowing against the source. So, we can say that I B is minus I D. So, this I D will increase if we turn on T 1 and T 6. So, we can say that I D increases when T 1 and T 6 are turned on and what about decreasing? This is the increasing current. So, we will say that for this region we are basically turning on T 1 and T 6. What about decreasing current? The current can be reduced when we turn off the switches. Now, when we turn off T 1 and T 6, what happens? When T 1 and T 6 are turned off, the load is basically an inductive load. In the inductive load, current will try to maintain its path. So, when the transistors are turned off, the current looks for an alternative path and the alternative path is provided by the feedback diodes. The feedback diodes are here. So, we have we have the diodes in this case, the diodes are present here also. So, we have the diodes here and this is the feedback diode for the other transistors which is not controlled here. So, this is D 4 and we have another feedback diode which is present here which is D 3. So, when the transistors are turned off the current direction should be maintained. So, we we will maintain the current direction. So, this path is not there. So, the transistor are, are now off. So, the current has to be maintained. So, the current which was flowing in this direction positive here and negative here will look for an alternative path and the alternative path is, is provided by the diodes. The diodes are in this case is D 4. So, the current will come from D 4, D 4 turns on and then this current will flow back through D 3. So, in fact, when we turn off T 1 and T 6 automatically D 3 and D 4 will be turned on because of the nature of the current and when these two diodes are turned on a negative V D C V D is applied across these two windings. Okay. So, we can see here that earlier this point was positive. Now, we see that when D 4 is on this terminal, the terminal of phase A, this is phase A terminal and this is phase B terminal. Phase B was earlier positive because T 1 was conducting. When D 4 is conducting, A becomes negative. So, it means that is a tendency to reduce the current. Similarly, when T 6 was conducting, the B terminal is connected to the negative of the DC voltage. When D 3 is on now, the diode is on, B is connected to the positive of the DC voltage. So, in fact, when we switch off T 1 and T 6, D 4 and D 3 are automatically turned on and they are on to reduce the current I A. So, I D increases when T 1 and T 6 are turned on. It means I A also increases. This is number 1 and we will say that I D decreases. when T 1 and T 6 are turned off, which means 
if they are off, which means diodes D3 and D4 are on and this also means I A decreases. So, for this region we have the conduction of D 4 and D 3, D 3 and D 4. So, we are able to control the current, the, the current can go high or increase and current can also decrease and this is done within two band and this band is called a hysteresis band. So, in fact, we have one band called upper hysteresis band and the other band called the low hysteresis band. So, this is the upper band. and this is the lower band. So, if we control this current within two band, we can keep the current approximately quasi rectangular in nature. So, the current as a result would be something like this is being controlled and then after 120 degree duration it comes here and becomes 0. And then this is again controlled in the negative direction like this and then it again goes to 0. So, this is the nature of I A which is which can be approximated to approximately a quasi rectangular waveform like this. Although we have the reference current which is a quasi rectangular the actual current follows the reference within a hysteresis band. Now, let us try to find out the power in a brushless DC motor drive. In this case, we have a trapezoidal excited motor where the waveforms are trapezoidal and the current in this case are quasi rectangular in nature and the current exists when the voltage is positive. Now, let us try to calculate the power in such a drive. Now, here if you see the power in this case P P is because of the currents in all three phases. So, in fact, we can see that P is equal to E A I A plus E B I B plus E C I C. Now, if we take the 60 degree interval, the fast 60 degree interval that is this 60 degree interval. Now, we see that I A is positive and I B is negative and I C is 0. So, at any given time only two phases are conducting. So, for the first 60 degree we will see that I A is positive and what about E A? E A is also positive. Let us assume that this E A value is capital E the peak value is capital E here. Similarly, this is minus capital E, this is plus E and this is symmetrical for all three phases. Now, the power in phase A is given us E into the current is I D. The current here is I D here, this current is I D. So, the power in phase A is E into I D. What about the power in phase B? The power in phase B, this is phase B, the voltage has reversed, this is minus E here, the current is also minus I D. So, we can say that the power here is minus E into minus I D. And what about phase C? In phase C, the current is 0. So, we have current phase A is positive, phase B is negative and phase C is 0. So, phase C does not contribute to any power for the first 60 degree. So, if we calculate power for the first 60 degree, it is E i d 
plus minus e into minus i d and that is equal to 2 e d 2 e i d. So, the power here is 2 e into i d. So, what about the torque? The torque is power by the mechanical speed that is omega r m and that is equal to 2 E i d by omega r m and we can say that is equal to we have we have a torque constant that is k t into i d. So, we can show that the torque is proportional to the diesel current. So, in fact, we can increase the torque by increasing the current and decrease the torque by decreasing the diesel current. So, the torque waveform will be will be a smooth waveform that is a function of i d and torque is equal to k t into i d just like a DC machine. Now, let us see how we can control this motor with a closed loop control. So, we will we will see a closed loop control here. closed loop speed control of a trapezoidal excited excited brushless DC motor drive. So, we have the expression here T is equal to torque is equal to k T into i d. So, in fact, we can control the torque by controlling current. So, if we want to have a closed loop speed control, we should be having a closed loop speed feedback. So, we have a reference speed and then we compare the speed with the actual speed. So, we have we have the reference speed here that is omega m star or omega r m star the rotor mechanical speed and that we compare with the actual speed of the rotor that is omega r m and we feed that to a p i controller. And then the output of this will give us the reference current or the reference torque i d star and this is a subtractor. We can subtract this i d from this and we have a hysteresis control here as we have discussed. So, this is hysteresis control controller and then the hysteresis controller will be giving the signal to a switching signal generator. So, we have a switching signal generator. which will be generating the gate drives of the inverter that we have just discussed. So, this is the switching signal generator and this will be generating the voltages the signals S A for the phase A, the switching signal S B for phase B and switching signal S C for the phase C. And then we have the inverter, the inverter is a voltage source inverter. So, 
So, this is a VSI and here we have the dieseling in this case V D and this feeds the BLDC motor. And then we have an encoder here and encoder give the information about the rotor angle. The rotor angle is very important for synchronizing the power signal with the motor. So, we have the rotor angle which is generated or obtained from the encoder theta r and this rotor angle information is fed to the switching signal generator. And then we have a speed calculator here the information about theta r is fed to the speed calculator which calculate the speed and we are closing the loop. So, this is the output of the speed calculator is, is the speed the rotor mechanical speed which is used as a feedback for the closed loop speed control. Now, we know that we can also as well have braking operation for the braking we want to reduce the speed. So, the braking operation is identified by a negative speed error. Suppose, the speed is now 1000 rpm. So, if the speed is 1000 rpm if you want to break the machine to zero speed this error will be negative and accordingly we have to apply the signals in such a way that the torque will be negative. So, torque is given by k 2 into i d or if the phase sequence is reversed or the current signal is phase shifted by 180 degree we can say this is for motoring region for motoring and for braking T is equal to minus K T into I D the same dieseling current, but we are going for braking. How do we go for the braking? For the braking instead of applying positive current to the positive voltage we will apply a negative current to a positive voltage. So, when the, when the voltage is positive we will make the corresponding phase current negative that is possible. So, if we can do that instead of having positive torque will have a negative torque and torque will be given by minus of k t into i d. So, in fact, to have the braking operation we will sense the sign of this error. So, this is the speed error and we will be sensing the sign of this error. So, this is basically a sign block and this is fed to the switching signal generator. So, this sign information will tell us whether the performance is or the choice is motoring or braking. So, if the error is positive it is motoring, if the error is negative it is a braking operation. For braking operation the torque is negative. So, instead of applying uh, a current which is which is in phase with the voltage like this, if this is the trapezoid for motoring what we do we apply positive phase current like this this is for any given phase. So, I A and E A suppose this is our voltage E A or induced T M F this is a current that is I A for braking we will have it different kind of waveforms this is the voltage waveform here and the current waveform is 180 degree phase shifted. So, this is the current for the braking operation. So, in this case this could be E A and this is I A. So, this is for motoring and this is the, fi uh, the figure below this is a braking operation. 
and for breaking we need to know the sign of this error and this error is fed here to have a breaking operation. So, this is basically is a, is a closed loop speed controlled brushless DC motor drive where the motor is a trapezoidally excited motor and this can be applied for applications say for example, automotive applications like electric scooters, electric vehicles also and here we can have both forward motoring also forward braking. Now, let us see how to model this brushless DC motor drive. Now, for the modeling we would like to have an idea of the back EMF. So, we will see the modeling aspect of brushless DC motor drive and this modeling we will do dynamically. So, we will say that this is a dynamical modeling. of BLDC motor. Now, we know that here we have three phases. So, the basic principle is that for any phase we have the applied voltage and then we have the resistive drop, the rate of change of flux linkage and the induced TMF. So, we can write down the equation for each phase. So, we will say that for phase A, we will start with this that the applied voltage A n is equal to R s I a n plus the induced TMF because of the inductances that is L d by d t of I a and we have the mutual between phase B and C d by d t i b plus m d by d t i c plus the back m f that is e a. Similarly, we can write down the equation for phase b and phase c. So, this equations for phase a voltage, phase b voltage and phase c voltage equations are dynamical in nature because they involve the derivative term and the derivative terms are L d i a by d t, m d i b by d t and m d i c by d t. So, we can write down the equation for phase b and phase c and then from that equation we can solve these equations to get an idea about the various currents and the currents are i a, i b and i c. When we know the back emfs and currents we can find out the torque and hence the speed. The detailed modeling of this brushless DC motor drive will be discussed in the next lecture.